Hey, it's Michael Costa. This is the Tennis Anyone podcast. How you doing? It is Tuesday, November 5th. Holy shit, we're finally here. And if anything, we can all agree on, it's shorter campaigns. No? France does it. Canada does it. Great Britain does it. What do they call it? A snap election? The, uh, the party in power can just say, we're having an election now. And it takes like three weeks. It's great. Uh, that is not how this system works. I am very curious how you're feeling. You know, the polls say it's so, 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 so close. It's all going to come down to Pennsylvania. I have this hunch Kamala's going to win. Uh, I spoke to my brother in Michigan who's got a better gauge of reality because he lives in the center of the country. I live in this Brooklyn bubble where, uh, first of all, New York City is a bubble, but then I live in another Brooklyn bubble. Then I go to work at The Daily Show. So I don't have any gauge on real America. I definitely travel a lot as a stand-up comic. I think when Donald Trump won in 2016, uh, stand-up comics were not surprised. I remember being at the, at the comedy store in L.A. that night. People were crying. People were weeping, and um, the next day I flew to Erie, Pennsylvania to work Junior's Comedy Club, and that Friday, uh, and it must have, must have been a few days later, that Thursday or Friday night, there was a large group of lesbian women who were on a, on a roller derby team, might have been in Erie, and they came to my show, huge butch roller derby lesbians and i said to them i'm sorry about the election you know like that's too bad we could have had our first female president hillary clinton and they looked at me like i was crazy and they were like are you are you kidding me we're so happy trump won i was like oh shit i don't know about the country i don't know about stuff um but my sense and we'll talk some tennis but i you know there is stuff to talk about in tennis, and we'll get there. In particular, what I'm going to share with you is the prize money because I'm blown away that the um, commentators don't share the prize money more often. Um, but there's a lot of interesting prize money in this Asia circuit that's going on. Um, but this is, this is crazy. This, this, this is our, our, our country's election. It always feels like the most important election is coming up. Um, and my hunch is that people might have been tricked, enticed, intrigued by Trump the first time. People with their head on straight. Uh, maybe people like my brother, people who are business first, are, were tired of coastal elite and thought Trump is a business guy. He can, uh, he might quote unquote drain the swamp uh fresh blood coming in but i just don't see a lot of people in particular how trump has been campaigning with this negativity and this darkness uh, which you know easy to say he's being negative easy to say he's being dark but then it's like everyone's trying to kill him so i might feel that way too also you started it dude um you know why i don't talk shit that much because i don't want people trying to kill me you keep talking shit people get pissed doesn't mean you deserve to be shot, but what I think people don't ever talk about is think about the Secret Service that have to protect this guy. I mean, he's putting them at danger every time he does like the rally he did at MSG. Um, I think people with their head on straight could have been skewed or intrigued the first time. I just don't see this time. And... It would be very funny if Trump won the popular vote and lost the presidency. It would be good for the po national popular vote interstate compact if that happened, actually, because then Republicans and Democrats would both feel that the electoral system screwed them. So we could actually pass a national popular vote initiative. Um, but I, I, wrote, I made notes today because there's a lot to unpack. But I just get the sense that people aren't going to fall for the Trump trick again. 
And I think Kamala has done a very intelligent thing to reach out to those quote unquote undecided or quiet Republicans that are kind of pissed off about the direction of the country and direction of Donald Trump and Rep Republican Party. And she has given them a bridge. And where does the Republican Party go if Trump loses? I mean, they really got to make a decision. Are they going to stick with Trump? Are they going to, um, if, in my opinion, they should fucking say goodbye and start nominating more moderates. Can you imagine if Nikki Haley was up right now? Um, I think that would be so interesting. You know, I think it would be better for the country. Um, Trump could win. Trump could win. And one thing we're going to know is he plays dirty. It's like that tennis player that you played in the boys 10 and under, and you knew if you hit it anywhere on the line or near the line, it was going to be called out. Um, the last election, according to Donald Trump, was stolen. But the election where he won, perfect election integrity. Keep that in mind. The election he won never comes up with the election integrity. The election he lost, oh, my God, so many issues. But he, and there's like over 200 court cases. How many? How many? 2020 court cases Trump filed about election. Lawsuits regarding the election. CampaignLegalCenter.org. Trump and others filed 62 lawsuits contest. I mean, they lost every single thing. Every single one of them he was lost. Um, Kamala can win. Kamala can win, and it can be decisive enough that Trump and his people, you know, they pretend to f say there was election... Um, interference but they kind of back away that's gonna have to be like a big win like a big kamala win trump will not um give a concession speech would be my opinion this is a guy who uh when his ratings would be bad on his tv show he would rather leave or quit than have the network cancel the show we all know people like this kamala could win that's one of the things that could happen another thing could happen is trump could win he could outright win and um, that would be interesting to see. Whew, that would scare me, especially with his rhetoric and energy and negativity and enemies list. But that could happen. What's probably the 50 percent, 60 percent, 70 percent most likely to happen is it's extremely close. And a lot of this shit gets sent to the courts. And Americans are not going to have the appetite for this shit. And I won't have the appetite for this shit because I'm going to have to hinge the presidency on the appeals court of North Carolina or Nevada or some volunteer poll worker uh, who millions and millions and millions of dollars and in influence are going to come in to question the personal and work integrity of someone who's volunteering at a school to help count votes, it's going to suck. And if we know anything about Trump and his criminal defense, it's his whole strategy is to disrupt and delay and cause chaos. This is a man who, you know, looks up to Russia, which is what they do. So, Anyways, I voted early. Um, so I, I listened somewhere that it, this election was Ted Lasso versus Yellowstone. <laughs> and I kind of love that because Ted Lasso is funny. It's optimistic. It's it's warm. Uh, you could definitely say it lacks reality. Uh, Yellowstone is gruff, mean. Uh, it's a bully. But it's good. It's good drama. And it is funny to think. And I, and I like that comparison because it's kind of like what I said last week about how she sells joy and hope and he sells fear and rage. And we all have all of those emotions in us. You can like Ted Lasso and like Yellowstone or at least understand why people do like Yellowstone. I don't like Donald Trump, but I understand the anger 
why it resonates with people, in particular people who feel the system has fucked them over, even though they're voting, you know, you know, I'm realizing there's irony here. Uh, have lost their jobs, are looked down upon on society. I mean, you know, if, if you're uneducated white, it's very easy for all of us to look down on you. When you're uneducated non-white, there's a lot of society. There's, you know, the, there's really tangible reasons why that might be the case. Systems weren't in place. And, you know, your parents couldn't get a good place to live. Mortgages, uh, food deserts, shitty legal representation. You know, like there, there, it's it, it's an easier easier line to see. But educated whites love to look down on uneducated whites. And by the way, I'm talking like book educated because educated whites, me. I don't know how to fucking f fix a flange on the plumbing tool. Uh, there's different types of education. And Trump really speaks to the, and this is, this is his base, the um, non-college degree white person. And we all know when our lights go out or our, our plumbing backs up, or the person picking up the trash, or the cop who's called, or the firefighter, or the paver. I mean, these are all such important people that we often look past and don't listen to, pay attention to. Um, and if you're that group of people, they have anger. They have resentment. I understand that, man. I understand if you pave driveways all day and it's hard work, and you didn't go to college, and you're a white boy, and then you turn on every car commercial, and it's, or every corporate tweet is pushing um, how they are equitable and diverse and putting all this money or resources toward lifting up this group of people, which should and needs to happen, but that group of people isn't you. I understand that there's an anger there. I get it. I get it. And Donald Trump very intelligently plays to that group, which is a large group. What I what I'm wondering now is if he's gone too far deep and too dark. But every time he's done that, it hasn't been too much. There was a speech yesterday he gave where he was wearing a black suit and a black MAGA hat and he had shade over his face. He looked like Darth Vader. And. Remember, I think it was the 2016 RNC, 2016 RNC stage. It looked like, uh, maybe it was 2020. Let me look at 20. I'm sure they changed it. Uh, one of them looked like Darth Vader's spaceship. So I don't know. I don't know. I'm, I'm, I'm cautiously optimistic that Kamala will win. I'm not even certain that Kamala's campaign or presidency would benefit me. I just can't take Trump anymore. I can't take the tension. I can't take the anger. I can't take the negativity. I also don't think he's like this business genius. You know, if, 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 if he had all that anger, negativity, the stupid people that he associates with, the intelligent people that worked with him that then back out and say, whoa, don't work with this guy. That's all good if you're like crushing it, but I just don't, I just, I don't. That's not for me. Let's go through some shit real quick. The, de the presidential debate happened on June 27th. That was where Biden versus Trump. Trump won the debate because he was the only one who could finish the same sentences that he started. I've been saying this joke on stage, but it's true. I'll share it with you here today. Um, it was like no one watched that debate and thought, holy shit, Donald Trump is excellent at debating. He won the debate because Joe Biden kept scoring on himself 
In fact, they both scored on themselves. Joe Biden scored eight goals on himself, and Donald Trump scored seven goals on himself. Trump lied like 31 times in that debate. Biden couldn't lie because he didn't even know what the fuck they were talking about. A very depressing, sad presidential debate of two older white men, and you're looking at this going, is this the best that this country has? This stuff interested me. I had much different memory of the time. So that was June 27th. July 13th is when the first assassination attempt of Donald Trump happened. July 18th, five days later, was the RNC. Remember that? He came out with the fucking thing on his ear, and everyone said when Trump got assassinated, uh, the attempt, and he... Uh, he stood up and he did the whole fight thing, which I'm still like, isn't that a, how, how why does social, why would Secret Service allow him to do that? That it's won, it's over, he won, it's won, he won, it's over. This is what's interesting too. Two things. One, when Donald Trump was shot at, I think he got off eight shots, the guy missed. Um, he fell down. Somehow his shoes came off. And there's a lot of footage of him saying, get my shoes, get my shoes, get my shoes which I always thought was very odd that you get shot at and you're like, get my shoes, get my shoes, get my shoes. Right? Family, loved one, where's my security? Was there an exit? Shoes? And I like this conspiracy theory that he wears lifts in his shoes. He wears lifts in his shoes that make him look stronger, taller, straighter, he probably has some fucking back issues. I don't know. I don't know. Something he does with his shoes help him exude more of what he wants to exude. No, no idea if this is true, but it makes sense to me. So he gets shot. Somehow his shoes come off and he doesn't want to stand up and do the fight thing or walk to the car without his special orthodox shoes. Because everyone would photograph him and go, holy shit, he's six inches smaller. Or his back is all fucked up. Or he looks weak. Thought that was interesting, right? Second thing. Biden dropped out three days after the RNC. Eight days after the assassination. So Trump gets shot at. Does the whole fight, fight, fight. Everybody on Twitter says that's it. Trump's going to win. Then eight days later, Biden drops out. I mean, it wasn't long. It was pretty quick. And I had forgotten how fast that was. And I do think that was a very selfless and intelligent move by Joe Biden. I also think he had to. And it's easy to say you did the right thing um, but and be critical of it because it was late in the game, quote unquote. But I'm thankful he did. I'm thankful he did. Um, either way, it kind of sucks, okay? If Kamala wins, half this country didn't want her and passionately felt that Donald Trump, who I believe is right there, is, is, is low to medium, quickly rising into a fascist leader. A lot of it depends on this uh, election. Keep in mind, he's a convicted criminal. He's got three other cases coming up. He lost the Stormy Daniels case. He's got, uh, um, I used to remember them all, uh, stolen documents, secret, uh, secret documents. That, that one doesn't look that promising because the judge he appointed is the one ruling over it. Federal election stolen and also Georgia, I think. Is there another one? He was trying to uh, influence Georgia election. So... It kind of sucks that this many people in the country s support that, in my opinion. You know, it, it's, it's again, I'm trying really hard to not be anti-Republican. I am someone who has voted all over the ticket. And I just, it, it, it's sad to me that this many people, <laughs> excuse me, Support someone who I feel is so fucked up morally, ethically. I, I, I versus we, we, we. Lots of I with Trump. Excuse me. 
Um, also, the positive way to look at this is we're going to be okay. We're going to be okay. But uh, the country goes on. But don't forget, Rome, Rome fell. Countries fall. We will fall. America will fall at some point. I don't know if it's here. I love this quote. I always thought it was Mark Twain. I Googled it. Someone asked him, you know, Mark Twain was terrible with money. Isn't that so funny? He was, he was in a lot, a lot of different bankruptcies and such a great, such a great writer. Where is this thing I'm trying to read? Then I'll give you some tennis results. I appreciate your guys' patience. Did I lose this already? I might have. I lost it. So let's do this. Let's go to history. Let's go to history. Show full history. Let's just redo it. <laughs> Sorry, everybody. Mark Twain bankruptcy quote. Great. So. Someone asked Mark Twain, how did he go bankrupt? And he said. Gradually and then suddenly. So I Google that because I, I heard I stole that from somebody. I heard it on a t um, talking head or something about how democracy gets lost the way Mark Twain described bankruptcy, gradually and then suddenly. So I Google that. It's not Mark Twain. It comes from an Ernest Hemingway book, The Sun Also Rises, which I think I've even started. Um, and Bill asks, how did you go bankrupt? And Mike said, two ways, gradually and then suddenly. And I do like it in reference to Trump and our democracy that you don't just wait. It's like addiction. You don't just wake up and you're addicted to heroin. It fucking happens gradually. You start doing a little bit and then you do a little bit more. And then all of a sudden, holy shit, junk food, working out. This happens. This can work positively too. Hey, for 10 minutes, I practice the harmonica every day. How'd you get good at the harmonica? Really slowly. And then all of a sudden I could fucking jam. <laughs> I got to practice harmonica. The same thing goes with democracy. And maybe we need to learn this lesson. I just hope we learn this lesson without it actually happening. Wouldn't it be interesting if the Republican nominee was Nikki Haley right now? Another woman who was pro-choice. Was Nikki Haley pro-choice? Nikki Haley. Abortion. Nikki's Haley, Nikki Haley's history on abortion policy includes Haley's pro-life position will save many babies. She's pro-life. That'd be interesting. You know, there's a lot of this country's pro-life. That would be, I think it would be more interesting if the Republicans nominated a woman who was pro-choice. And you know they're out there. Come on. So interesting, interesting, interesting. Uh, the Republicans have cornered themselves with Trump. They bet big on them. See what happens. Uh, I voted. I voted early. My daughter, who's four, asked me today if I was voting. I said, yes, of course. She said, who are you voting for? I said, none of your fucking business. Um, tennis. The, the WTA year-end event is happening right now. Coco Goff and Iga Svantec are playing right now. And Coco won the first set 6-3, and she's up 5-4 against Iga. Um... This is great. Coco has, is, I just watched a couple, I watched a match over yesterday. She's hitting her forehand great, you know, and you know that's a good sign. She beat Jesse Pagula very quickly, very, um, uh, Rolex Paris Masters happened. Sasha Zverev won his seventh Masters 1000. I mean, think about that. That's a lot. No one's going to be surprised if he wins a Grand Slam, but that's a lot of Masters 1000s to not have won a Grand Slam. And how many finals has he been in? One, two. Uh, he beat Umber. It was a fun environment. It was in Paris. Umber's French. He beat him very handily. Uh, anyone who's annoyed playing a lefty, watch this Zverev Umber Paris final. Umber's ad why. Uh, um, Ad court wide serve is insanely good, but so is Sasha Zverev's, Zverev's backhand. And to watch Umber serve that thing out wide and just 
be totally neutralized, if not defensive, a lefty serving out wide in the ad court to then be on his heels because the return was so good. Uh, it's fun to see that, and it's empowering for us righties who hate playing lefties because Zverev was just like, oh, yeah, serve to my back end, you dumb motherfucker. I'm going to smoke your ass. Um, Sasha Zverev has won 23 titles. He's won seven matches, 1,000. He's $46 million. This guy's a beast. He's a beast. He's a beast. He's a beast. He's now two in the world. I would love to know how many of these indoors, how many of these uh, 1,000s came indoors. I'm going to guess five. Um, for winning the Rolex, he wins million dollars. Runner up got 500,000. First round gets $25,000. Uh, This also means Zverev obviously made it to the year end. The people in the year end, the top eight, Casper Ruud, Andre Rublev, Sasha Zverev, Yannick Sinner, Carlos Alcaraz, Taylor Fritz, Daniil Medvedev, Alex Di Manure. Where is Novak Djokovic? With no Novak Djokovic unable to compete due to injury. Interesting. Injury? What the fuck is the injury? So that's interesting. This much younger class, right? That's kind of fun. Um, for the women's year-end final right now, check out this money. This is being played in Saudi Arabia, right? Am I right? Saudi Arabia. The money is basically the same as men. You get a participation fee of $335,000. $335,000. That's correct. Um, now, keep in mind, on the men's side, it, it divided it in three based off each match. If you've only played one match, you would get like 115,000, whatever. But you get, if you play your three matches, you get $335,000. If you win one match, you get $350,000. That's a shitload of money. That means if you win one match, you're going to walk out of there with $750,000. This is Saudi Arabia. Semi-final win, 1.27. Finals win, 2.5 million. If you go undefeated and win the whole thing, 5 million bucks. That's a lot of money. Compare that to the men. This is the year-end ATP finals. Um, $331,000 to participate, which means it's basically the same as women, a little bit less, actually. Round-robin match win, $396,000. So if you show up and you win one round, you're going to make... $750,000. If you show up and lose all three, you're going to make $331,000. Semifinals, $1.1. Finals, $2.2. Undefeated champion, $4.8 million. There's actually more money at stake for the women, which is why they're in Saudi Arabia, which is, which is the problem we all deal with in life. Chuck Lorre. Who, sh who created all those wonderful TV shows that your parents love, said they pay you a lot because they're killing you. Uh, Zverev beat, this is on his way to Paris, beat Greek Spore straight sets. He beat Fies, Fies, Fies in uh, three sets. He beat Tsitsipas straight sets. He beat Rune straight sets. He beat Umber finals. Straight sets. He was crushing. He was crushing. He was crushing. It wasn't Mark Twain that said gradually then suddenly. Ernest Hemingway in a novel. Right? I would love to be the type of public figure, comedian, podcast host, that when you hear something intelligent that someone else says, even if it's in a fictional book, you go, oh, you know what? Costa said that. Someone says a hilarious joke. That's a Costa joke. No, it was a fucking different guy joke. When was Ernest Hemingway even alive versus Mark Twain? Ernest Hemingway wiki. Bang. Ernest Hemingway was born in 1899 and he died in 1961. Mark Twain wiki. Mark Twain was born in 1835 and died in 1910. So Mark Twain died in 1910 at 74. 
Ernest Hemingway was 11 when Mark Twain died. So they did not know each other. It'd be weird if they did. But funny that Ernest Hemingway wrote a novel and a guy a hundred years younger than him gets credited with the great line. That sucks. That'd be like if I said something funny and then someone was like, you know who said that? Jack Benny. You know that great joke Costa just told on stage? You know who actually first said that joke? Charlie Chaplin. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, this is Michael Costa, the Tennis Anyone podcast. Get out and vote. I'll be here next week no matter what, unless Trump shuts me down. He did say he would attack his enemies from the military. Remember, the three options are Kamala wins, Trump wins. It's so close, and uh, this, this, this election gets court-martialed. Um, we're more, we have more in common than not. Uh, the people who, wear, who, who, who fly Trump flags are annoying, but if they weren't flying a flag and you bumped into them in the grocery store, you would get along with them. You would chat them up. The people who uh, have different beliefs than you, if you're both stranded on the side of the road, you would find something to talk about while you both waited for AAA or the service people to come. That's my point. That being said, I think we could calm it down, and I hope we do. Daily Show tonight, live. I'll be on it. Love you guys. Game, set, match, Costa. November 23rd, Washington, D.C. Get your tickets now. That's my next stand-up date. What else? Buy my book, Lucky Loser, link in bio. Give some magic stuff.